Imagine a world colored by the hues of history, where Theodosius, a figure destined for greatness, entered the stage on a cold January day in the year 347. Born in the captivating province of Hispania, his father's name, a mirror of his own, hinted at the legacy that would be woven through the fabric of time. This paternal connection was more than just a name, it was a torch passed down from one accomplished man to his promising son. The elder Theodosius, a high-ranking noble who had navigated the intricate realm of top military positions, was a towering presence in young Theodosius' life. Picture this young scion, imbibing not only the wisdom of books but also the scent of battle, as he was raised amidst the echoes of a military life. In the pivotal year of 368, father and son embarked on a fateful journey across the sea to Britain. With an army standing at their side, they faced a formidable challenge, a wave of invaders who dared to challenge Roman authority on the island. Britain, long neglected by Rome, had withered into a land of weak dominion. Yet, from the ashes of neglect arose a father-son duo, wielding determination as their weapon and unity as their shield. Their campaign unfolded like an epic tale, and in its resounding climax, Roman influence was restored, earning them not just victory but recognition. The story takes a dramatic turn as Valentinian, the reigning emperor, cast a nod of appreciation toward the elder Theodosius. In bestowing the esteemed title of Master of the Horse, Valentinian essentially positioned him as his trusted right hand, a man of unparalleled influence. In their footsteps, father and son embarked on a journey marked by valor and ambition, traversing lands and clashing with challenges that history would remember. Yet, destiny's hand would play a role of its own. By the year 378, the elder Theodosius had departed this world, leaving his son standing at a crossroads. The young Theodosius found himself at the forefront of the Danube frontier, a senior commander, and in a unique position to shape events to come. It was during these defining moments that the threads of fate converged, intertwining the lives of Theodosius and the empire itself. As Valens, the emperor of the east, embarked on a perilous march to Adrianople, Theodosius' astute decision to remain behind proved providential. This choice would see him stepping into a role of greater consequence, as the remaining Roman forces along the Danube found themselves under his command. The stage was set for Theodosius to step into his destiny, a destiny that would lead him to the very pinnacle of power. In a twist of fate that resonates with the poetic, Gratian, the youthful emperor reigning in the west, would find himself looking eastward. The Gothic crisis that had cast its shadow over the realm demanded a solution, and there was one man uniquely positioned to provide it, Theodosius. With the weight of history upon his shoulders, he ascended to the throne of the eastern provinces in the brisk January of 379. Yet, his reign would not be defined by the comfort of his throne, but rather by the tumultuous challenges that awaited him. The Gothic tempest raged through the Balkans, threatening to upend the fragile order that Theodosius now held in his hands. And in his response, he revealed a facet of leadership that set him apart, a sensitivity to Gothic interests that went beyond the norm. It was a blend of military might and diplomatic prowess that would guide his path in the coming years. Theodosius did not merely engage in campaigns against the Goths, he danced a careful dance of politics, offering olive branches alongside the glint of his sword. Through battles and negotiations, he sought a balance that others had failed to achieve. His interactions with Gothic leaders were not mere exchanges of power, they were intricate tapestries woven with the threads of mutual respect. In 381, Theodosius achieved a stroke of brilliance that echoed through the annals of history. Drawing Gothic leaders into the heart of Constantinople, he enveloped them in opulent luxury, an experience that would resonate deeply. These chieftains, their hearts warmed by the lavish feasts and vibrant culture of the capital, returned to their people with tales of a Roman world more nuanced than they had perceived. By 382, treaties sealed the fate of the Goths, but these were no ordinary agreements. Resettlement plans allowed them to forge a community within Roman territory, preserving their identity while offering their martial prowess to the legions. This was a leap of faith for Rome, a testament to Theodosius' belief in the power of unity, even amidst diversity. It marked a moment when the empire's interests aligned with those of a foreign group, resulting in a formidable partnership. Theodosius' reign was more than a sequence of events, it was a symphony of resilience, diplomacy, and strategic thinking. His legacy would reverberate through time, a testament to the power of leadership that sought strength in unity and harmony amidst diversity. Ladies and gentlemen, time to take a plunge into the chronicles of a bygone era, a time of grand emperors, shifting tides, and the echoes of destiny. Join me as we journey through the riveting life of Theodosius, a name that resounds through the corridors of history like a powerful anthem. The symphony of interests, my friends, wasn't always harmonious. 
Theodosius, a master of strategy, found himself navigating the intricate waters of domestic policy. Imagine the breathtaking form of Theodosius, a majestic masterpiece modeled after the illustrious form of Trajan in Rome. In the heart of Constantinople, the heartbeat of the empire, the rhythms of growth were palpable. Yet, the city's bounds were bursting at the seams, yearning for expansion and fortified protection. Theodosius, the visionary, recognized this need for safeguarding greatness against the march of time. But the saga doesn't end there, dear history seekers. Theodosius, a trailblazer of change, set his sights on another horizon, the gradual fading of paganism. Imagine the decrees ringing across the land, as gladiatorial contests were cast into the shadows, the pillars of support for pagan religious institutions crumbled, and the age-old practice of sacrifices met severe restrictions. These actions rippled through the fabric of beliefs, ushering in a new era as he sculpted the Roman world in his image. Hold your breath, for we're not done yet. In 381, an ecumenical council materialized in Constantinople, a momentous sequel to the famed Council of Nicaea convened by none other than Constantine himself. Heresy, doctrine, and the intricacies of mainstream Christianity took center stage, painting a vivid tapestry of debates and decisions that would shape the future. And as the West beckoned, a political storm brewed in 383. Emperor Gratian faced the tempestuous revolt of Magnus Maximus in Gaul, setting the stage for a showdown that would define the course of history. Troops converged, swords clashed, but fate favored the charismatic insurgent. Magnus Maximus, charismatic and beloved by the legions, overshadowed Gratian himself. A twist of destiny, leaving Gaul, Britain, and Spain in Maximus' grasp, while Valentinian II, the resilient scion, held the reins in Italy. Amidst the chaos, Theodosius emerged as the linchpin of stability. His diplomatic flair danced on the tightrope of unity, as he orchestrated a delicate balance between these divided domains. But let's not overlook the broader canvas, his gaze extended beyond the realm's borders. Eastward he turned, forging ties with the Persian Empire. Picture the grand tapestry of diplomacy unfolding as ambassadors journeyed between Rome and Persia, stitching a fabric of cooperation and mutual respect. A historic agreement emerged, shared influence over Armenia, that would mark the dawn of a rare period of harmony between these colossal empires. Fast forward to the year 387, a pivotal moment in this grand narrative. The ambitions of Magnus Maximus ignited, triggering a clash of titans. Valentinian II, the fleeing emperor, sought refuge in the east as the two forces converged. And in 388, on the banks of the Save River in Croatia, history etched the Battle of the Save, a clash of wills that would forever be imprinted in the annals of time. Theodosius emerged victorious, dismantling Magnus Maximus' forces and putting an end to his aspirations in a heart-pounding finale. Yet, as his reign pressed on, an event would unfold that showcased the convergence of power, faith, and redemption. The Massacre of Thessalonica, a dark stain on history, saw Theodosius' wrath unleashed. Thousands perished, and it took the moral compass of Milan's Bishop Ambrose to guide the emperor towards repentance. It was a profound demonstration of Christianity's influence, where the voice of a bishop resonated louder than the decree of an emperor. As Theodosius' reign neared its zenith, a final challenge arose, a clash with the usurper Eugenius. A crescendo of conflict and resolution unfolded, marked by victories and struggles that would shape the legacy of Theodosius for generations to come. Victory was secured, but as the dust settled from the battle in 394, the seeds of unrest were sown. The treatment of his Gothic troops in the heat of the battle would come back to haunt the empire in the future, a foreshadowing of events yet to come. And so, at the tapestry of history, intricate and vibrant, now bore the imprint of his footsteps. A ruler who left an indelible mark, shaping the course of history in ways both expected and unforeseen.